Alright, this is the flip side. Welcome everybody. Video number five of the Advanced Platoon Leader game system. Jog through, run through, crawl through, walk through. With the soundtrack to The Keep in the background. If you haven't seen that old movie, The Keep. Kind of a weird World War II golem type movie thing. Uh, check it out, it's cool. Anyway, soundtrack to that plan because I dig it. But. <clears throat> Where are we at now with this? Uh, I want to give you some uh, flavor crystals that go into this thing by way of optional rules. So we do have night rules uh, as an option. Uh, things can catch fire, get your smoke. Um, <clears throat> pretty straightforward with that. These are your smoke counters. Right there, that's how they start. Next turn becomes a one. The next turn the ones get removed. So you got your smoke in there. Um, like I said, night rules. What else? Volume of accurate fire. Uh, volume of accurate fire was um, controversial, and we decided to keep it in here. But basically, when you roll one or more hits, the unit that receives the hits will get a volume of accurate fire chip that stays with the unit the entire, the entire turn. Uh, if another unit fires at it, it will add that or however many volume of accurate fire chits that the target has accumulated to its <clears throat> uh, die roll uh, which will further increase the firing unit's ability to do damage to that target. Uh, that is the volume of accurate fire optional rule. We have a panic rule in here, um, also a facing optional rule that will allow you to uh, inflict greater damage if you flank a unit or approach it from the rear. We have a crossfire optional rule. And we have a random platoon slash squad activation rule. So rather than uh, <clears throat> determining yourself who activates, especially with the US, you can have a representation of a unit in a draw cup. Whenever whatever you draw is who will activate. Uh, keeps it a little more unpredictable. Untried German strength. Now with that, <clears throat> a scenario will typically tell you, in fact it will always tell you, the strength uh, at the beginning of the scenario of all the German units. Now, <clears throat> if you so choose, you can conduct a random roll for each unit's strength. That is done by simply rolling a one die, or whatever you roll, that's what the German unit starts out as. So that would be a strength of four. That's pretty fun to play with. Uh, optional long range fire rule, random end turn. So after each phase shit is drawn, you draw an additional shit from another cup. If it's gray, no problem. Draw another shit. Sequence of play phased shit. After you do so, draw another random end turn shit. If the shit is red, set it aside. You have two red shits here and I think eight gray ones. <clears throat> Once the second red chit is drawn, that turn is done. Now, it doesn't matter if all of the uh, phase chits have been drawn yet. It doesn't matter if you have action points that haven't been used yet. That turn is done. That is your random in turn optional rule. We have a two-player variant. We also have a handicap that allows uh, for a, a more ease of accumulating action points when they're rolled for. Then, of course, the AI, which is optional. <clears throat> and then that brings us to build your own scenarios. It talks about uh, the type of battle to be considered when you are designing your own, the order of battle, uh, support weapons, uh, and a lot of this stuff can be randomly determined, which is uh, also fun. The victory conditions to be considered when designing your own uh, victory points. And we have a campaign game that is uh, a bit rudimentary, but it's in here. It's a way to link the given scenarios uh, or uh, link your own. Uh, this will include promotions and awards, um, everything. You can start out as a corporal and make your way all the way up to captain. And then with the awards, you can, uh, you can be awarded everything from a bronze star to a silver star, distinguished service cross, congressional medal of honor. And of course, Purple Hearts. Uh, odds and ends, the map configuration can change. Now, typically we keep this a three column, um, four row variant, and that can be changed as demonstrated in the rule book. 
while still maintaining that basic uh, concept. We also have specific German unit types. Uh, what would be the unit type for an engineer, strength-wise, uh, morale-wise? What would be the typical strength and morale of a, an SS unit? That is all included, Fallschirm Jager. Um, also, uh, Volksgrenadier is included in here. Uh, then we have your points-based game. There's a way to use points to, again, purchase forces. And then finally, the uh, designer notes. Now, that's pretty much a run-through of everything, at least from a surface approach. Now, admittedly, this thing, uh, there's a lot more under the surface. Uh, as to be expected, but only so much time, and uh, what I would like to do is, uh, <clears throat> in future videos, run through an actual bona fide scenario, um, and that would also allow me to uh, break down the scenario for you. So that is going to be it for this video, and... Again, I want to thank you guys for watching, and in case you do not know, the release date for this will be um, <clears throat> St. Patrick's Day, unless uh, it's just not feasible for us to, to reach that date, uh, but from the way things are going, that is a, a very realistic um, date from which this thing can be uh, released. <clears throat> now, what's going to be released? Uh, what will be released is a print and play versions will be um, available, but uh, boxed versions as well. Now I had talked about the Ziploc versions. I don't think I'm going to make those available until all the boxed versions are gone. Uh, once those have been depleted, <clears throat> then the Ziploc versions will become available. So you're basically going to have two options, the print and play version that you can uh, purchase and download, or the boxed version. Prices on those have not been set yet. That is mainly because we have yet to send the rule book, uh, scenario cards, uh, and a couple other things to the printers. Uh, and uh, we will need the prices for that. Once that occurs, we can set our prices. Um, of course, you have to take into account shipping if you're going to purchase the box games. And as far as you international folks out there, uh, I'm not going to say no, you can't order a boxed version. Uh, but I'm going to say it will cost you a pretty penny because international shipping is not cheap. I won't know off the top of my head as we speak how much, but uh, they will be available to the, uh, our international friends. Uh, so there's that. Other than that, I think that covers it for this video series. It's five kind of short and sweet videos for you, breaking down the advanced platoon leader game system. It's a mature, uh, graduated, more evolved version of the original platoon leader system. Hope you guys have enjoyed what you've seen so far. I encourage each and every one of you to send comments, <clears throat> send questions, send suggestions. If you don't want to post it at the bottom of this, these videos, send it uh, via email. Uh, you can reach us on Facebook at HNS Games. Uh, you can reach us on Facebook at Hexes and Soldiers. You can go to Board Game Geek and hit up the HNS Games page. You can hit up my designer page or you can hit up the advanced platoon leader page there so you have options all right thank you guys for your attention and uh, we're very excited about this <clears throat> um, all of this is coming together it's been a long time coming so for that I'll say goodbye and uh, till next time thanks for watching